Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called We Are Human, written by Captain Candy. The loud hiss of the hydraulic door, opening and depressurizing, sounded out in the massive, miles-wide, empty chamber, with a single machine in the center. Myself and my group walked forwards, with our metallic footsteps echoing out, as we uniformly marched to the machine in the center. Me and my team of five all stopped in front of the device that is meant to hold the knowledge of our long lost legacy. It took us thousands upon thousands of years to finally find even a small thread to grab to rediscover our lost history. We aren't the only old race with our lost history, not after the Great War. That war left half of our universe dead and the other half gasping for breath and praying to the now-dead gods that they would make it through. There were millions of races with uncountable numbers of lives that had lost their histories and forgot who they were before the war. What is known is that a mythic race that has been praised, feared, and revered called Humanity started the war. The exact reasons are lost to time, as are the specifics of the first battles. We know that humanity started it by fighting some slaver empire that served some lesser god of desire. We know the war escalated when the empire tried to surrender, and humanity pushed for their genocide. The god that this empire served stepped in to prevent the complete extinction of the race that served him. The human took this personally and decided that if a god would stand in the way, then they would kill a god. That was the first time humanity would kill a god. But it would be far, far from the last. After that war was settled and humanity was given a title of god killers, nobody touched them for a time. Eventually, though, another empire under another lesser god, this one a god of war, wanted to prove their strength and challenged humanity. We know that they attacked unprovoked and killed no less than ten human worlds in surprise attack to start the war. This ignited a fury in the humans that dwarfed what they showed even in the last war. This empire under this god of war fell in mere months under the wrath of humans that made even some lesser gods of wrath recoil in horror. This time, humanity did him pause as they bound, chained, and subdued the god of war. They dragged him back to the capital of the human empire and publicly executed a god with a life feared across the galaxy. The force with which they used to kill this god was said to atomize even his divine vessel. Other lesser gods, out of fear, jealousy, and some out of boredom and greed, alighted together to eliminate humanity. It is said that the humans faced a ten-front wall, all against divine empires who outnumbered them three to one. At the end of the war, ten new gods lay dead, their divine essence spreading across human space and enhancing the humans further. Well, it would have been if humans were able to use magic or divinity. Instead, the humans saw no difference in their worlds and continued as normal. After this war, no lesser god dared to even invoke the notice of humanity, lest their unholy armaments be turned to them. There were god-killer races before, but none had ever killed a full dozen gods. Humanity, for a time, became untouchable. Peace reigned in the human empire for a few centuries and they developed in silence and prosperity with other races. That is, until the intermediate god of slaughter saw mankind and tried to subjugate them as the loyal slave soldiers after hearing how even lesser gods were unable to bar their path. This war turned into one between two galaxies, and humanity with steps like those of an old titan, a being beyond even gods, marched across the void between galaxies and sought to exterminate this new threat. The weapons they brought to bear in this war bent the laws of reality itself until they screamed for mercy. The ships they piloted named Planet Breakers after the old icebreaker ships they used in their naval days. The ships would sail through planets, cracking them in half and hardly even slowing down. The intermediate guard threw dozens of lesser guards at humanity and ten times that number in empires under his rule. Humanity slew gods like reaping wheat from a field, and the normal citizens under these gods were oft seen needing to humans in worship and surrender. 
Whole empires bent the knee under humanity's titanic wrath until they faced the intermediate god himself. And in battle, they tore asunder the very supermassive black hole that held the god galaxy together. Humanity lost half of their forces, but finally, the intermediate god fell as well. At this point, even the high gods took notice of humanity. As many races had slain lesser gods, none in the history of creation had killed an intermediate god. Humanity knew this as well, and it is said that they converted in their whole to a life of war and power. It is said that their civilization reached a type 3 on the Kardashev scale, and with the power of an entire galaxy concentrated, created weapons that could smite parts of reality itself from being. They knew other gods would come to eliminate a threat the likes of which they had never seen before, and the power they built and began projecting was godlike in its own this is when the war finally, truly began. The gods attacked first, and in a matter of years, hundreds of lesser gods fell, and the humans had expanded to other galaxies and tamed them as well. Divine blood flowed into rivers in this war, and as it went on, more and more gods joined in to form a front against the monsters that were humanity. Then it happened. A human scientist made a breakthrough, and they became a Type 4 pulling energy from the space between universes. This was the power of the vine, and a territory of no mortal race was meant to tread. After humans achieved this, intermediate gods fell like grass to a mower. Then the high gods decided enough was enough. Gods of creation, life and death stepped into the battle to suppress and annihilate the human menace. What nobody saw coming was that the humans would not kill but cripple every single high god that attempted to destroy them. With the high gods falling back to recover, humanity had a chance to catch its breath from its now millennia of constant war and battle against the divine. This was a chance that the gods would regret giving mankind as they continued to develop and grow. They gained power over creation, and were harnessing whole universes and contained vessels to power their weapons and armaments. They stepped into the ranks of a Type V civilization, and stood as equals with the High Gods themselves. With this new power, half of the universe kneeled at the feet and whims of humanity. This was when the Titans themselves came from beyond creation, from the space between space, from dimension designed specifically to allow them to exist without harming other universes. When they stepped into reality, the universe itself trembled before their power of time, space, creation, and a myriad of other powers beyond even God. Humanity did not back down, though this time they were exterminated in the quadrillions, galaxy by galaxy. They were pushed all the way back to their home galaxy, as the Titans sought their total destruction for disrupting the order that they had worked for countless Gogols to produce. When pushed into this corner, humanity desperately sought ways to fight these Titans, and a breakthrough occurred in a desperate gamble. A universal containment unit was thrown into a singularity, and then the singularity was launched into the face of a Titan of Karma. That day, the multiverse itself felt like it stopped from sheer terror. A titan, a force that ruled over and maintained the balance of infinity, fell to its knees and died to the wrath of man. The other titans were horrified and summoned high gods from across all creation and began a campaign that would end with the extinction of most known gods across infinity. Eventually, humanity pushed them all back. They were bloody, exhausted, and on the brink of faltering and falling down they pushed the titans and gods back into heaven. Then, in a fit of rage and a final desperate push, humanity broke into the multiverse and invaded even heaven itself. That day, heaven fell. Humanity had done it. They had won. They had a seat on the throne of all infinity. However, it came at an unimaginable cost. Humanity had pushed itself to the very brink, and ultimately, they too fell with their final opponents. Humanity was lost to the universe and fell forever, but had freed every mortal race in creation from the oppression of the gods 
and showed us that we ourselves could become gods. After this war, though, nobody in our universe knew their own histories. Kronos, titan of time, had in the last feck you to humanity, scattered history and time. He distorted everyone's memories, and time became tangled. Humanity had prevented this from wiping any races out, but controlling time across infinity was no easy task, and history was not lost physically, but forgotten. Now my race and every other race seeks to find our lost pasts before we try to take steps forward as civilizations. In front of me and my team is a device said to hold our history, one we searched 20,000 years to find. Taking a deep breath that my mechanical body no longer needs, I placed my hand on the device and started. Connecting my mind to the network of minds of my now mechanical race, we have been mechanical since the war, and lost not only our memories, but our biological forms. We are millions, but unable to reproduce or replicate ourselves. Our numbers have dwindled in our search for this device. And now, all of my remaining brothers and sisters will know what we are. Then, as my mind connects to the device in front of me, I fall to my knees, and the sound of my team doing the same echoes through the chambers, and we, my entire race, in our collective mechanical forms, begin to weep. All the knowledge of our past is once again restored from this device that we had made in case Kronos or another Titan decided to do something like this. I feel millions of trembling minds echo the same words as knowledge of how to return to our biological selves come in. We are human. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps, Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomer Waffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.